A line dancing team in Seattle was told that their American flag shirt outfits made some people feel triggered and unsafe and were asked to leave the event unless they could comply with either no shirt or get rid of the flag shirt, whatever it might be. Let's get into it. How is this happening in Seattle? It's a line dance deal, right? I mean, and they're wearing United States flag type shirts. What's going on? Here we go. Let's get to the bottom of this. Here is what, here's what these folks look like. Do these guys look like terrorists with their terrible, terrible shirts? People were actually triggered by this. Could you imagine being triggered by the American flag? They got the flag up here. They got a POW flag here. I mean, it's country and Western line dancing, right? It's a big deal right now. It's a huge deal. So they're going to dance around in these shirts and somebody gets worked up. And in Seattle, you can be one out of a thousand people. Ah, it's triggering me. Yeah, I'm all snowflakes here. Seattle is just loaded up with people who can't work their way out of a wet paper bag. You know what I mean? You're just like, how, how did this happen? And I blame it on, I blame it on California. I've lived here all my life. I've lived in Texas for a little bit. Um, and I've visited a lot of places, but I've lived in Washington state all my life. And we really started to see the changes. I wasn't aware of them at the time because I was pretty young. But when I first started in real estate, we started to see all of the folks from California move up to the Pacific Northwest because housing is so much cheaper and better quality of life because California had already just been raped. I mean, just, you know, for lack of a better word, just, just, you know, run through. And um, from the standpoint of, you know, housing, quality of life, school systems, all of that, they've just, just been ruined. So, hey, let's go up the West Coast, you know, the left coast, West Coast a little bit further. Let's go to Seattle. So we started to see all the folks come in from California. And that is what has ruined Seattle. Seattle is a logging town. Seattle is a fishing town. It's not a bunch of snowflakes. Those are imported. So, you know, days gone by, this was a different city, but it really changed in my adulthood. We just got all this tech bros. And um, yeah, now people are worked up because somebody wears an American flag on their shirt. Members of a regional women's country line dance team <laughs> were reportedly kicked out of a Seattle dance convention after organizers claimed that the American flag themed shirts made some attendees feel triggered and unsafe. I have an American flag shirt and I wear it proudly. You know, it's one of those sideways ones. I got a bunch of shirts that actually have the flag on them. Um, and you have to be careful where you wear that in Seattle because people will get upset with you. It, it, they, they will. They just will. Like, ah, that's not good. So I've also got you know a bunch of hats with with flags on them, as you do. And the one that I wear the most is a dark blue hat with a dark blue flag on it. And I've got one of those other flags, the red, white, and blue flag that you can stick on it. Velcro. You know, you got to be careful in Seattle because people will kick your ass for wearing the flag. And that's how ridiculous things have gotten, right? Over the weekend at the Emerald City Hoedown in Seattle. I didn't know there was an Emerald City hoedown. Line dancing in Seattle. It just doesn't seem like the right thing, does it? Over the weekend, the Emerald City hoedown in Seattle, the borderline dance team was set to perform, but were essentially told that they weren't welcomed by organizer Rain Country Dance Association, an LGBTQ dance community, over their matching American flag-themed shirts, Jason Rance reported for 770 KTTH. Jason Rance is the one that broke this. And um, I, great, Jason's got a great reputation for people being able to go to him with their story. And he throws it out there and he gets great exposure. He's on Fox a lot and he's, he, he's a good um, getter of news, right? Unfortunately, what our team was met with upon arrival was that our flag tops were offensive to some of the convention goers. The dance group posted to Facebook. There was a small group that felt triggered and unsafe. If you are triggered by somebody wearing the American flag, your head is up your ass. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. People don't want me to swear on news for reasonable people, but every now and then you're just going to have to say something direct because it's the truth. I mean, triggered and unsafe because you're wearing these outfits. I mean, here's, here these ladies are again. That to me, that to me is, 
not a triggering event. I mean, you got a bunch of people with a cowboy hat and a flag in the background. and They're going to go do some line dancing. If that's triggering, I mean, you need some mental health. Oh, we're triggered by the flag. Really? Why? You, you don't, you don't, you know, believe in patriotism. You don't, do you stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance? I mean, do, do you kneel? Oh, you do. Okay. All right. Well, there's our answer, right? At first, we were told that we would just be booed, yelled at, and like many of them would walk out. It's true. It's true. There was a, um, <laughs> there was four comedians that were going to play a comedy club in Seattle in Capitol Hill. That is our LGBTQ neighborhood. It's very well known. You've probably heard of Capitol Hill. That's where Chop was. That's where Chop and Chaz were. But um, these comedians and Jim Gaffigan was the one name that I had, that I recognized. And um, he's been around for a long time. And I don't remember his show being anti, I don't remember any of his content being, hey, oh, look at that gay guy and, you know, doing a joke. You know, I don't remember his being any of that. But when people found out that these four guys were coming into town, they were told that, um, you know, we can't have you, we can't have your, your acts here because they, you know, some of the folks here are, they're tweaked out by, um, you know, they're triggered by your content. And not one of them had a routine that anybody could figure out that was wildly anti-gay or anti-L, whatever it is. There's, it's one of these things where in Seattle, unless you are on the LGBTQ plus side, it's like you're against them, right? If you're a hetero, oh, you're against them. If you're cisgender, oh, you're against them. And that's just not true. You, you got to let these people do their line dancing. I'm not a huge line dance fan, but I, I'm not a fan of a lot of things. I'm not a lot of fan of classical music either. I like classic rock, but there's a lot, you know, everybody's got to have their own deal, right? So line dancing, no, not my thing, but let the people dance in their Patriot shirts. This did not deter us, but then we were given an ultimatum. Remove the flag tops and perform in either street clothes, which most didn't bring as they traveled there in their uniforms, or they would supply us with ECH shirts from years past. Or don't perform at all, which was effectively asking us to leave. Yeah. <laughs> what world are we living in? We, didn't, we don't speak for our team. We speak on behalf of them. So the choice was theirs, the Post said, as we knew would happen because there was really no choice in our minds. It was a unanimous, no, we're not changing our shirts. We're not changing our shirts. Seattle is filled with so many snowflakes. They're just, they're butt hurt at the slightest thing, you know, that goes, oh, that's offensive to me. I loved uh, Candace Owens. Candace Owens being fired from, um, Ben Shapiro's deal, uh, Daily Wire. She got fired, but um, that's a big news story. I've been trying to trying to work that one out, figure out what's going on there. Whatever, they're going to do a debate, Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. Candace Owens. One of the funny things, a clip that I saw of her was some snowflake was talking about how um, you know, does this upset you? Does that upset you? And Candace Owens popped off with, "Life is tough. Get a helmet. That's all I can say to you. Because life is tough." See, all these folks that are, they get their feelings bent out of shape, that's what I always think. I might not agree with somebody hammering on them or the way that they're being hammered on, but yeah, don't be a wiener. You know what I mean? Just Life's going to have shenanigans. You got to be tough. Otherwise, that's ah, offending me. I'm just going to go home. I'm going to cry in the corner. If you can't get up and just do it again and again and again, then you know what are you even doing? And that's why I think you've got so many people and society has just coddled these generations coming up into believing that somebody actually cares about them being triggered. And I just flat don't. I could care less. You're triggered? <laughs> I get triggered by stuff all day long and it's ridiculous. Then I podcast on it and I get paid. Anyway, Stamp told Rance that members of the team were shocked after they spent only 30 minutes at the venue before they started receiving complaints. Is that a flag shirt? <laughs> adding that the team is patriotic but doesn't make statements about politics guaranteed if this was a bunch of dudes they would have done it shirtless guaranteed right 
Can't you see a bunch of patriots? Ah, uh, you don't like our shirts? Here we go. Oh, we didn't intend that. That's offensive too. Nipples are offensive to me. Can't have the nipples. Don't fray the nipples. My team doesn't take a political stance. We came to dance, she said. We're a patriotic group. We support our military, our veterans, our first responders. We're a group of patriots. I have to go with that. Is <laughs> That is what I found on their Facebook page and in their photos. I don't see anything other than that. So somebody got triggered. And, uh, yeah, we can't have flags. Good Lord. That's terrible. That's awful. When I was down visiting my parents for this past, um, what was it? I think it was, it was Thanksgiving. I went to Oklahoma City Thunder game, basketball, NBA. It's, that's the Sonics team. We call them the Sonics because Oklahoma had better businessmen at that time that owned professional sports. And <laughs> they moved the Sonics to Oklahoma City. So I wanted, to, I wanted to take my parents to a game. We went to a game. The most shocking thing for me was that they opened up with a prayer, right? Coming from Seattle. Nobody prays. We don't even have people to go to church here. It's just, it's, you got to, oh, you're weird. Where'd you move from? Cause you're not from Seattle, right? You got this whole thing in Oklahoma city where, you know, they start off with a prayer and it was just, it was like, wow, this is amazing that a big city can pull this off and not have a bunch of knuckleheads who are offended by the flag. You know, we had the prayer and then we had the national anthem. Everybody stood. Everybody knew what the deal was. There's lots of kids running around. Nobody got shot. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was a great event. It was super fun. So people throw a lot of crap at living in Oklahoma from the standpoint of, you, know, you don't have a lot going on. But the lifestyle there and the lifestyle in these states is so different, is so different that I can see the pull for wanting to be there from, hey, I want to raise my kids here. Because you get to take them to an NBA game and they're going to pray at the beginning, whether you're religious or not. You know, nobody ever got hurt doing a prayer. You know what I mean? It's, it's just like, all right, even if you don't believe whatever, then, yeah, you know, so close your eyes or, you know, look on your phone for a second while the prayer is being said and everybody calms down for a second. It's never going to do anybody any harm, right? You might think, oh, I'm an atheist. And I don't believe. Well, whatever. Yeah, you know, just just do your thing for the two minutes that prayer takes place, and but that kind of thing, it goes a long way in in the whole belief system. And when you've got a belief system in Seattle, we're like, ah, it's, the flag scares me. In the Facebook post, the group said that they were not the only one that received this treatment. I bet they weren't. Our friends, West Coast Country Heat, who were also scheduled to dance for the con convention that that evening also did not perform as they too proudly don the colors of our country in the same spirit of patriotism that we do, the Post said. Both of our teams stood in solidarity and put actions to words. Good. I think that's great. I mean, it's a, it's a line dance event, right? It's not even a competition, I don't think. Oh, no, you can't, you can't not compete because you got the flag. The flag. That's, that's a huge no-go. We're triggered. These people are strong, resolute, and unwavering in their patriotism, the Borderline Dance Team said. They are families and friends of people who have suffered the unimaginable so that we may all have our own opinions and sleep soundly in our beds at night. You know, talking about veterans, right? Talking about law enforcement, first responders. That is why we wear the colors, because although we may not always agree with the current state of things, we recognize that being an American means true freedom. That's what I think, you know, folks in, in Seattle, they, they just get, they get so far away from the actual reality, which is, all right, so, you know, are you willing to go to war? Oh, good Lord, I don't believe in violence. All right, well, that's how this whole thing works. If they come and invade us, you need to have a crew of guys up there and gals who are willing to fight for freedom. Oh, yeah, but oh, we don't want that. Yeah, but, but we do support Hamas. So many knuckleheads here in Seattle support Hamas. It's like, what? Terrorists? They go in and just you know, atrocity after atrocity? Uh, and then deny that there's atrocities happening? We all understood and accepted this and walked out with class and dignity despite the discrimination we'd experienced. Isn't this just straight up discrimination? Oh, we don't like your clothes. Yeah, you're a group of people. We don't like your clothes. You're out of here. You're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the Rain Country Dance Association did not respond <laughs> for comment, but indirectly addressed the incident on Facebook. Hi, y'all. 
After the close of another amazing hoedown weekend, we know that there are some questions about the Saturday night performance lineup, the Post said. We appreciate y'all giving us the time to clear up misunderstandings. I don't think there was any misunderstanding. It's like, take the shirt off and, um, or don't dance. That sounds like the misunderstanding, right? And address the situation with people directly involved. We'll be posting a follow-up statement later this week once we were able to have those conversations. Why are we always having conversations? Why are we always just, instead of just doing stuff, just issue an apology, say you were wrong, and, um, you know, wish the people back instead of having conversations about what may or may not have happened. It's pretty clear to me, right? We will be in continued communication with the captains of the dance teams that were slated to perform Saturday, she wrote. Don't care. Your, your whole thing, you just, you screwed it up. Or, I mean, this is what they wanted, right? This is what they wanted. And, oh, flags. No, no can do. So does this set precedent for stuff down the road? Are there going to be enough you know, people like me who are going to, you know, bring this back up? Hey, are you going to let flags go? Or is, is flags now on the, is that on the uh, nowhere? Are we going to start not being able to wear a, you know, hat with a flag on it on the plane? What else is going to be canceled, right? Because this is essentially, they're canceling the ability of this line dance team to perform, right? To do their thing based on their appearance. It's just straight up. I don't like you. And we're not going to give you the chance to do your thing. Not going to give you the chance to do your thing. Now, some people might say, well, yeah, but Sean, the the far right, um, they have flags. Yeah. All right. But, you know, National Anthem at the beginning of the game, there's a flag there, too. You know what I mean? It's not like everybody that wears a flag, you know, is is doing crazy stuff that some of the far right groups do. That's not that's not a correlation. See, you can't get triggered by that. That's just a no-go. It's a no-go. Oh. But you see more and more of that. I have a very patriotic Cornhole game in my backyard. Yes, cornhole. If you don't know what cornhole is, it's, it's not. It, your mind went to a dirty spot there, right, for a moment. It is that game where you you stand twenty six feet apart, and next to you is it's um, you know a piece of wood with a hole in it, and you toss your bean bag across the lawn onto the other you know cornhole setup on the other side of your yard and try and make it into the hole. It's about that big. I've got a patriotic one. And um, I, I think it's great. It's got the flag on both of them. It's cool. It's cool. But I've had people say, say comments to me, not directly to me, but to, to people that have been at my house. Nice cornhole setup. You're like, yeah, well, you don't have to play on it. You can go. You can go. But, you know, people like that, a nice cornhole setup. Like, nice shirt. Got the flag on it. Yep, I do. I like it. You don't like it. Don't really care what you think. All right. That's, um, I think we've beaten this one to death, but that's what we got going on in Seattle. That is cancel culture in Seattle. Oh no, flag on your shirt, no line dancing for you. Yeah, Crazy stuff, right? That's it for me on this one. Love to have you subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We're dropping two videos Monday through Friday, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Love to have you get that content. Again, thanks for being here. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.